Hey, what's up everybody, Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to create depth of field in post-production in After Effects. So depth of field is best captured using your camera, using a um, low aperture, so something closer to zero, will give you a bigger depth of field, which just gives you that bokeh effect, the blur into the background. You can add it in post-production, and that's what I'm gonna be showing you. It's a little bit of a tedious process because you're gonna actually have to cut out your front element and recreate the blur behind it. However, it can be done. Also, another little disclaimer is this is a graphics intensive and a CPU intensive process. You're both having to rotoscope and blur, which are both um, CPU intensive within themselves. So when you add them together, it might get, you know, start slowing your computer down a little bit. So just keep that in mind. But this is the effect right here is if I go ahead and undo or click it on, you'll see that the background blurs like so. And if I uncheck it, um, it goes back to what it originally was shot at, which was basically an infinity focus where everything, even way back there was in focus. So let's get started on this effect. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and create myself a new composition right here. I'm gonna name this one, uh, let's go depth of field, like so. And we want it to be a common, uh, you know, 1920 by 1080 P. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually going to import some new footage here. It's the exact same footage, except I rendered it out in a little bit lower res so that it'll uh, load quicker while we're doing the tutorial, uh, just uh, for clarity's sake. So now I have this footage right here, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna click on this button called Roto Brush Tool. What the Roto Brush Tool is gonna to allow me to do is it's going to rotoscope for me. Um, I can rotoscope manually, and that just means taking a mask, so I basically click on this and I go around the head like so. You know, I do the entire body here, but that can be quite tedious. Um, it's actually extremely tedious because then you have to move the frames every single frame you go forward, you have to move all of them for that and it takes a long time. Sometimes that's a necessity. If Roto Brush doesn't work, that's your only other option. But in this situation, there's actually a decent amount of contrast between the body because it's all blacks and um, down near here, it's actually skin tones, which are the opposite of the background. So it has high contrast and this will allow me to use this Roto Brush. So once I click on this, I need to double click on my footage and you'll see I get brought into the layer instead of the composition. And now I have this little green pixel, uh, the little green circle. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to draw uh, a rough edge of what my Roto Brush should be looking out for. So all you have to do is just sort of emulate this shape like so and then it'll do the rest, and you'll see that it, it didn't add some of the areas in the center here, so we wanna go ahead and fill these in. You'll see that there was the, the purple lines around the center, that means that it was gonna cut these out and actually let the background go to it. We don't want that. So we're gonna add those back in. All you have to do is just click over those to add them back in. You'll notice it went too far down here. To fix that, you hold down the Alt key and your cursor will go red, and then you just draw the path away from it like so and now it understands that it didn't want here, it wanted the circle to be here. And just keep doing that. Sometimes it'll refresh like that if it's really graphics intensive. And so we could try to bring it in only to the body here, but I think that since this is on the same plane of sort of you know uh, 3D space, we actually want this area right here to also be in the roto to be protected from the blur that we're going to add in later. So now if we go forward one frame, two frames, you'll see that it's going to just keep calculating this roto brush and you see that the, I look at the camera right here and so it messes up just a little bit so we have to just touch this up. So we need to remove that, we need to re-add in that and anytime you do this it's going to be a little bit, like I keep saying, tedious. Um, even with this tool, but you are still saving a lot of time, you just gotta fix just the little areas instead of the big areas this time. Okay, so let's move forward one more. And you'll see that it takes a second for the um, footage always to catch up. But then it'll render it. And then we can even move like really far forward. And what it's going to do is it's going to create the roto all the way up here. And then we just got to keep adjusting the roto down um, to make sure that it is where we want it to be. There's only ever going to be little minor issues because, of, like I said, this is a high uh, contrast subject. So it's pretty easy to do. You can see that we have some stuff here. And so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just do, go ahead and do this for the next couple of frames and then I will explain after we get this done. Alrighty, so we're coming to the end right here. And actually what was great is after we got those first couple frames done, it looks like it kept the track perfectly the whole time. So I didn't really have to do much else after that. 
And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually add a ton of feather to this because blur is soft, so we don't need any harsh edges here. So I'm gonna blur this out a little bit, the, uh, the feather, and that'll allow it to blur slightly in with the background. We want to then go back to the composition and now we can kind of see what it has taken out. And you can also adjust the feather here to sort of see what it's gonna do. And you see if I bring it up, it brings back some of the elements. And it also takes some of the elements away. Um, that's just kind of how feather works. We can also shift the edge uh, out a little bit. And I think we, we should do that. We should give it a little bit of a, a breathing room around the edges here and then keep the feather going up even stronger. And this is gonna allow it to blur, blend in with the background really well, which like I said, we're using a blur here. So I think that looks the best. So now we have this going right here and we have it uh, rotoed for this first like second. And so you'll see that it, uh, I am perfectly cut out of the background. And now all we have to do is we're gonna take this, we're just gonna um, hit Control D to duplicate it. On the bottom one, we're going to go ahead and delete the, uh, the roto on it. So the top one has the roto. So now the top one is just me. And then the bottom is the background. And it's, it's everything, but it's also the background. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the background and we're going to go ahead and look for uh, blur. So you just search for blur. And then down here in Blur and Sharpen, I'm gonna use the camera lens blur. So I'm gonna drag this onto the bottom one. And now you'll see that it automa it just automatically blurs it because I think it starts at, yeah, five. And five actually looks pretty good. It looks pretty realistic. But we can go up to like, even if we wanted like a really intense one, but you'll see that the lines start to come through even higher. Um, you actually get these really like spiky lines because every one of the lines up there becomes sharp. Uh, it's still sharp. So what we wanna do is we wanna back this up a little bit to maybe like, five five or six and you can still see that there's lines up there so what we're actually going to do is we're going to drop down the uh, shift edge some and we're going to keep dropping it down until we like what it looks like let's drop it down more and actually in this situation we might yeah want to drop it all the way down because you see if it, even if it goes up a little bit you start getting those spiky edges and we don't want that and all it is is from these um, lines that were that are not being blurred so we might actually wanna go the opposite direction here and go into the negatives where it cuts in a little bit. And the reason for that is because with the feather, it actually still looks fine. Um, because like I said, the camera blur, it sort of is very soft, so you can get away with some of this stuff. And let's go back into the bottom one right here. And we have, I think the blur radius at six is looking good. And now you see we have added in some artificial depth of field right here. Um, and this is a time lapse, so that's why it's kind of a little choppy here. But that is how you add in basically any depth of field. Is all you have to do is you have to cut out the element that you want to stay in focus. So you can use the rotoscope tool or you can manually rotoscope yourself. Um, once you cut the person out or the object out, then you duplicate it and use the other one as a quote unquote clean plate on the bottom. That'll fill in the rest of your scene. So now you've cut out your person or object and behind it is this background, that's your bottom layer. You're gonna add the blur to your bottom layer and then you will get the depth of field look from it. That is it on this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and throw them in the comment section below or on our website at adobemasters.net in the forum section there. I'd love to answer you. Uh, there and if you want to see more videos similar to this one go ahead and hit that subscribe button I make a video every other day on Adobe related content until next time guys see ya